This is an experiment to determine the speed of sound using standing waves. I've got a tube here where, which I can adjust the length of because the cylinder that it's in has water, so I'm going to be a movable end, a closed end to this pipe. At the other end is a speaker and that will form an open end to the pipe. So I have an open end and a closed end and I can adjust the length of my pipe here. This signal generator will send a signal to the speaker so I can produce a fairly constant sound wave with the speaker which will reflect at the water and produce a standing wave here. So I'll get a standing wave formed in the pipe. And I will just demonstrate now that I can form harmonics using this setup. This is a 900, frequency, 900 hertz frequency sound wave. So we've got a harmonic. And that's the next harmonic there. So what I did there was I produced a 900 hertz frequency sound wave in the speaker and at certain points we realised, we noticed that it got louder and that was when I formed the harmonics. So I formed two harmonics, one about there and one about there. Now, if I take the diagrams, we know what the diagrams for these harmonics are because with a closed and an open end on the pipe, there's a, there's a particular order to the shapes of the standing wave. So if I take the first one, this is the, this is the fundamental for the closed pipe. Okay, now that's a quarter of the wavelength for that, uh, for that harmonic. And um, now the we so the conditions are that there's a closed end, so that gives me a node here. And this is an open end, so this gives me an anti-node. Now that anti-node actually occurs slightly outside the pipe. And therefore there's a little bit of extra length in addition to the length of the pipe itself. It needs to be included. That's an end correction there. The C, that's what I call it C for correction. So L plus C is equal to a quarter of the wavelength for the fundamental. And then I continue to increase the length of the pipe and I form the next harmonic, and that looks like this. It's a longer pipe, and the yeah, again, we have a node at this end, and we have an anti-node just outside the end of the, the open end. So. That's what our, the shape of our wave would look like. There's an anti-node here and a node there. So we've increased the number of nodes and anti-nodes by one each. This time, we still have a, an end correction. The end correction is going to be similar to the other one, if not the same. And then we have the length of the pipe here. Now I'm going to call this one, this length, L1, and this will be L2. And I will assume that the end, two end corrections are the same. L2 plus, now, plus C is equal to three quarters of the wavelength here. There's three down and over. Now, to get the best possible value for the speed of sound, um, what I'm going to do is form both of these harmonics and measure the lengths at which they occur. I can eliminate this end correction from my equation by taking away L2 from L1. So this, this equation is L1 is equal to lambda over 4 minus C, and this one is L2 equals 3 lambda over 4 
minus C. So now if I do L2 minus L1, which will be delta L, the change in the length, that's equal to 3 lambda over 4 minus C minus all of this. So that'll get rid of my C terms there, they're going to cancel out. So I get 3 lambda over 4 minus lambda over 4, which is lambda over 2. So all I need to do now to get a more accurate value for the wavelength than just using one harmonic is work out this difference in the length here. So the wavelength will be equal to 2 times delta L. So that's what I'll do. I'll form those two harmonics and measure the length of the pipe at those harmonics using a ruler here, which is fixed so that it's as vertical as possible. Okay, let's measure these lengths. I'll just take one reading for each and then do the calculation to work out the speed of sound with that. Okay, going for the first harmonic here, the fundamental. Then L2. I'm working out at what position on the ruler the water is at, and then the position of the speaker there. Okay. So Okay, so my L1 value as I said the, the frequency was 900 hertz there may be some unreliability there but we'll just use that value L1 was 0.255 meters L2 0.435 meters okay so now I can work out my wavelength and that is 2 times 0.435 minus 0.255 This equation V equals F lambda, which is then 900 times by 0.150. Oh, so I didn't multiply that by 2. This should be, how do we use that? Times 2, which is 0.360. Multiply those out. Three hundred and twenty four meters per second. 
So that's my value for the speed of sound using that experiment. Uh, the percentage difference there. is 340 minus 324 over 340. So that's 16 divided by 340. That's 4.7%. That's actually pretty good. Uh, for the uncertainties in the signal generator and the uncertainties in taking those length measurements. Anyway, 4.7% percentage difference. And uh, yeah, that's how you calculate the speed of sound using standing weights.